So I want to give you some examples of blend modes and masking for creating interesting composites and effects. To start with, I have a clip here. This is a still that I've animated with the Ken Burns effect to do a little push on this forest scene. But I want to add a little bit more to it. So I'm going to press X to mark this clip. And then I'll choose this clip in my browser that has a nice bokeh look to it. I'll press Q to make a connect edit that exactly matches that range. Now by default, we'll only see the clip on top, and this is where the blend modes or composite modes come in. Command 4 for the inspector. In the video inspector, at the very top in the compositing section are a set of blend modes. And if you've worked with Photoshop or other imaging editing applications or After Effects or something like that, you're familiar with these. But if you're not, there are a large set of modes to choose from here, and each of these performs a mathematical operation that combines the pixels of the two layers together. And they're divided into categories based on these little dividing lines that we can see here. These first set of five will generally all make the result darker between the two clips. The next set will generally make everything lighter. This next third set here will do a little bit of both. It will make bright areas brighter and dark areas darker. In other words, it will increase contrast. And these other ones have some more specialized applications. But for right now, what I want to do is choose either overlay or one of these light ones. So we'll choose overlay at first to see what that does. And we'll play a little bit. And it's a very subtle effect. We see a little bit of wash going across the image as it moves here. But not a lot going on. Let's tap the V key to turn that off and on. And we can see there's a little bit of impact there. Let's try a different one. Let's try screen. Screen is a lot brighter. It's taking this top clip and adding the brightness values to the bottom clip and creating a much more dramatic impact. And it may be too much. A great way to modulate the impact of a blend mode is by dropping its opacity. So we can bring that down and have a not quite so dramatic impact. Let's try another one. Add will generally be even more dramatic because it adds the pixel values together. And that looks pretty good. I might also try soft light. Again, that's very subtle. And then usually these other ones, vivid linear light, pin light, will be a little more intense. Let's try vivid light. That brings a lot more color into the scene. Really, it's a matter of experimentation and playing with the different blend modes, having a basic understanding of which ones will make things darker, lighter, or a little bit of both, increase contrast, and then adjusting the impact through the opacity. Let's look at a different example. In this case, I want to do something with this really beautiful shot in Arizona that accentuates the sky. I'm going to use a combination of a blend mode and a mask. So I'm going to go to the effects browser, to the mask category, and we have something called a graduated mask. This is a really cool effect. Now, I'm not going to put it directly on this clip because it will simply, let's show you what it does first. It will actually cut out mask or create transparency in part of the image. It looks like it's making it black. But if we view alpha, we'll see that it's actually transparent back there, which is not really what we want here, even though this does look kind of cool by blackening the bottom part of the shot. That's pretty cool right there as it is. It's not what I'm going for right now, though. So I'm going to delete that off of there and instead. I'm going to add a generator on top of this clip. So I'll press X to select it. I'm going to go to the generators. And I'm going to take the solids, the custom one, and press Q. Then in the generators inspector, I'll change it to a dark blue color. We can play with that a little bit later to adjust it. But I'm going to go back to effects and put my graduated mask on the generator. So now we see something going on where the generator is being masked in a graduated way. In other words, a gradient of transparency runs from the top to the bottom where we can fully see the generator up top and we don't see it all below. Now that's great, but I do still want the clouds to show through this color. So what I'm going to use is a combination now of a blend mode along with this mask. So I'll go to the video inspector. 
and I'll try a blend mode of overlay. And now I get a very dramatic impact of that graduated mask on our image. The way these two on-screen controls work is the bottom one controls the distance between the two, how quickly the gradation of transparency changes from being not transparent at all to being fully transparent. So if they're close together, we see it, that line is very dramatic. So now that we've set that up, we can play with the look by going back to the generator and playing with some different colors. So we can create a very different sort of dramatic and false looking sky or a very dark sky with a little bit of color in it. I have a big impact on what the scene looks like simply by using a blend mode in combination with this generator. One other thing we can do to modulate its impact is reduce the opacity of this top generator itself. Now I'll tap the V key to turn this off and on. And we can see how the combination of this graduated mask and the blend mode really has a big impact on the look of this shot. In this next example, I have a video clip that has very low density or low dynamic range. And of course, you could use color correction to increase the dynamic range to bring in darker darks and potentially brighter whites if we wanted it. But there's another option I want to show you because it's something that's worth considering when you are adding effects to clips uh, or even just color correcting clips. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this clip, Command C, move the playhead to the beginning of it, and then I'm going to press Option V to paste a copy right on top. And then I'm going to apply a blend mode to combine these two clips together. Now before I do that, I want to show you what can happen if your clips are not in sync. So I'm going to move this clip slightly off so they're not totally in sync with each other. And now if I apply a blend mode to the top one, for instance, I'll just do a linear light. We can see a little bit of a ghosting or halo there because these aren't in sync with each other. So if you get out of sync, in this case it looks pretty easy, but what if I, instead of move this over, what if I actually slip this clip? I'll press the T key and I'll drag to slip this clip so they're not in sync with each other and I need to figure out how to get them back in sync each other. A really great way to do that is to use a different blend mode and that blend mode is called Difference, which looks at the difference between the two clips. So I'll select that and my goal is to make everything completely black. That way, that way I know these clips are in perfect registration with each other. So I'll drag this clip back over. Looks like I'm almost there. And now I'm perfectly black and I know they're in perfect registration with each other. So difference is a great way to um, ensure that your clips exactly match each other. Now that I've done that, let's go to something like overlay and we can see that we've got much more vibrant color and much more contrast in the shot. Let me tap the V key to turn that off and then back on again. Another way we can see this, I'll press Command 7, which will bring up our waveform monitor. So with the top clip turned off, we have a range, dynamic range of around 10 or 15 up to about 75, up to about 80 there. If I turn that clip back on again, we can see a significantly increased dynamic range that we've brought to these two clips. I'll press Command 7 to turn that off again. Finally, I want to look at an option for doing a similar effect, but taking a little bit further. So we have this nice shot of Ali here, and it's been color corrected and it's beautiful, but I want to do a little bit of an effect on here. So Command C to copy, Option V to paste, and I don't need the extra audio track here, I'll bring that down. And I'm going to change the blend mode here to something else as well, but I think I'm going to try something like Lighten. And we don't really see an impact there, so I'll try Add. And there we get kind of a bright look to that shot, which I like. So I'll toggle that off and on. And it really just brightens up the shot. I like that very much. But I'm going to take it a step further by adding a blur effect to this top clip. So um, in our effects browser, under Blur, I'm going to add a Gaussian Blur to this clip. And it gives it a soft, ethereal kind of dreamlike quality. Let me toggle that off and on. And we can modulate it by adjusting the amount of blur. But I like it pretty soft. And it really has a beautiful effect. 
The thing is, I don't want to lose the clarity of her face here. I'd really like to keep her face excluded from this blur. Well, the great thing is that all effects in Final Cut Pro 10 include their own masks. So right here at the top right, next to where it says Gaussian, we've got a mask. I'll click it and choose Add Shape Mask. And then I'll move the shape mask right over Ali's face and form it to her face. And I'll leave the amount of feather about where it is. I think that's good. And it's doing the exact opposite we want right now. It's actually adding that blur in here, but not to the background. What I'm going to do is click up here and choose to invert this mask. And now she's clear, but the rest of the background has that soft area about it. I'm going to make this even smaller just so we can really have clarity mostly on her features. Like right about there. If I don't want to see the mask, I can just click right here and we don't see the mask, but we just see the result of combining these clips. So we have a blend mode that brightens everything up. We have a blur built into the blend mode that gives it a dreamlike quality. And then we have this mask that allows us to keep clarity in her face for the shot. So there's a couple ideas to think about when using blend modes in combination with masks. Mm -hmm.